Yes, great, you made it. I have a project that I am taking on today and I want you along with me. Welcome back people and a huge welcome to my Thrival Tribe. If you haven't met me before, my name is Lexi Tommy and this is my Thrival Guide. Every Thursday, I'm here for you talking to you about how to get your life together. It's a fun little channel on adulting and I promise you it's gonna make everything run much smoother in your life. So keep watching today and subscribe below so I can keep coming back every Thursday with tips and tricks to help your home and life run much smoother. Last month, we talked about minimalism and I have a huge playlist for you to just go and binge watch. So go ahead and hit those links. And this month is gonna be fun too because we are gonna focus on getting spring and summer ready, baby. I am gonna help you step by step to streamline it all so that this is the easiest, breeziest summer you have had in a long time. And after this past winter, like, oh, please welcome summer, bring it to us. Today, I am clearing out all of the fall and winter clothing, sorting it all, paring down exactly to what I need and actually wear, and creating a spring and summer capsule with what I actually have. I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to do it, how I take this on, so that you can go ahead and do it at your home too. So like I said in the last like hallway closet video, I am going to show you my actual starting point. And just like last week, it is so tempting to just close the door back up and walk away slowly <laughs> but I just know that every second of effort that I put in to this streamlined summer clothing capsule I am gonna get back ten times over so closets are really tricky they seem to collect everything I don't really know what happened to mine I have an ensuite in my bedroom that has a built-in vanity even I never use it and we have more than one bathroom in our house but I don't get ready in those either for whatever reason this closet has become the command post of getting ready unless I'm like curling my hair or straightening my hair or needing to use like a heat tool of some sort I'm getting ready out of my closet I'm not sure how that happened but it did so work with what you're used to Figure out what works for you and just roll with it. So this closet looks like it has, you know, like a decent amount of stuff, but I do want to let you know, this is all of the stuff that I own. This is all of the clothing other than like jackets and like ski pants and things like that, like outerwear. Other than that, this is it. So I have already parred down a lot. So last year I went through this clothing process. I had already minimized and pared down my wardrobe, but last year I hacked it apart. So I have already limited what I own in terms of clothing for myself. And it was liberating. It no longer took any effort at all to see what I had. It was clear. Everything in here was fitting. It was ready to go but it's been a year and it's amazing what can collect in your space. The stuff that I did keep, some of it got worn out, some of it has pills. It's time to go through everything again. And just like the other videos of spring, I am just itching for a fresh start. So I'm gonna go through step-by-step step, the whole process on how I'm gonna make this work. Step number one, do all of your laundry. Yes, all of it, do it all. And all the different spots that you have clothing, like hiding, go and grab it. Get the stuff that's dirty into the wash and get the rest of it in the same spot that you are gonna sort everything else. Because Lord knows there is no way that you're gonna be able to accomplish this goal until you have everything that you own. Look at it all and deal with it all at once. So step number two, you're gonna wanna have your bin system ready to go or your out system. 
If you've been with me for a while, you know what the out system is, but if you're brand new, you're going to want to have a series of totes or buckets or baskets. You're going to want to have a small garbage. You're going to want to have a donation bin. You're going to want to have a sell bin. If you're going to look at selling some of the stuff that's new or that is in good enough shape to sell. And then you're going to want to have an unseasonable tote to take out the stuff that's for fall and winter. In step number three, it's really simple. You're just going to want to take out all the unseasonable wear. So anything that's related to fall or winter wear, you're going to want to take out all those chunky, heavy cardigans and sweaters, all those lined leggings. If you're in Canada, it's a giant category of clothing. If you live somewhere that's more warm, um, it might mean colors, different colors that you're going to take out of your wardrobe so that you can create just a spring summer capsule. Step number four is to take out anything that's damaged or stained or ill-fitting or you don't wear it. So for me in particular, I had this sweater and this sweater has made the cut for five years running and I have no idea why. I think it has to do with the feeling the sweater gives me because I never wear it. I loved the look of it. It's one of those like wooly kind of knit. You just came from skiing and you are in a ski lodge in front of a fire type of sweaters. But let me tell you, every time I put it on, I wear it for about 15 seconds and then I take it off again. The thing is itchy. It is tighter fitting. It is extremely hot. So I never ever wear it. And I spent a good chunk of change on it and I really have kept it around because it's so warm that I figure eh, like I'll wear it for skiing and it never gets chosen. It's time to say goodbye to the sweater. It's time to bite the bullet. Sometimes you just need to recognize that purchasing an item was maybe not the best decision and you can learn from it and move on. So once you've ditched the untouchables, Next is step number five, and that's where you pull out all the stuff that you love. You're gonna put that to the side and you're gonna save that. Some of the items may not even be pretty. Like some of my most loved items are things that are comfortable. I just keep reaching for them time after time. So even though they are not my beloved items, they are my favorites and my old trusties. So once you have the old trusties, Put them in the pile with the loved and my hope is is that i can take some of the like ooh, like kind of questionable but i love them items in my closet that are so comfortable and spruce them up a little bit with some of the other pieces that i might have step six is really easy too it is pulling out all of the things that you wear occasionally right but you still need them things like swimsuits and special undergarments girls i'm not getting you to get rid of your spanks that's what I'm talking about. Keep the spanks, keep the swimsuits. Those are things that we're gonna use once in a while and they're things that are still kind of needed in our wardrobe to put things together. Step seven, easy. See what's left. Check it all over. If you need to press pause here, a really good idea is to check out some Pinterest pictures and see if you can come up with some inspiration, some things that you would like to put together for your capsule wardrobe. Some styles maybe, some colors maybe, maybe it's a color like palette, whatever it is. You can take a look at some of the things you've been looking at recently and see if you can create them with the stuff you have. So in step eight, once you have your kind of inspiration, you wanna see what color palette really works with you. I can't wear orange. It's just a color I can't wear. It looks terrible on me. Um, I wear it on orange shirt day, <laughs> that's it. But that's okay. Uh, those are things that I know about my skin type and my hair color and what works for me and what doesn't. So find that for yourself. What colors seem to bring out your natural glow and your natural tones. You'll know what works with your skin type and or not. And if you don't, take a picture of yourself holding it up and you can tell in a picture if it looks good or not. Before I went through the rest, I did step nine. I considered 
reasonable numbers of what I wanted to actually keep in my wardrobe. This is where the capsule comes in. And I really, it's important to really narrow it down because you want some parameters. The purpose of a wardrobe capsule for me is to keep things simple, to make it a no brainer, to look put together, to have less to manage and for everything to fit good and look good. And I don't even need to think twice about it. Some of the things I considered when looking at what my parameters were going to be for my wardrobe capsule is how often do I do laundry? I do laundry once a week. It is like clockwork. Sometimes an extra load gets put in, but I do laundry once a week. I like to do it all at the same time. It's what works for me. Fold it all in one day, put it away all in one day and to minimize your wardrobe to the pieces that you need so that less gets dirty and less gets in those loads. Then I thought about if I'm only doing laundry once a week, how many t-shirts would I need? How many tank tops would I need? Like that's where the parameters came from. If you were packing for a week long vacation, what would you take with you? If you were backpacking for that weekend, or if you were trying to stay in a motor home, for example, what would you take that would simplify your days? That is like a really good starting point and then add one or two. Once I went through and figured out, okay, how much do I want? What is reasonable? Where are my parameters? And I wrote it all on a list. I went to step number 10 and step number 10 is really easy too. It is finding those items by category. So here is my t-shirt pile. I decided to keep four t-shirts. Four t-shirts is reasonable to me. And the reason it's reasonable to me between washing is there's only seven days a week. So if I wore a t-shirt every single day, there are some days where it's not dirty. I am never going to wear a t-shirt every single day. I work full time. So likely I will also be wearing like dress clothes. Or the other thing is I'm working out sometimes in the evenings. So I will wear like a workout shirt. I won't be wearing a t-shirt. Four for me is plenty. Now tank tops, I decided to keep two. I'm not a huge tank top wearer. And usually when I wear a tank top, it's in my athletic category. So two is good for me. So make this list work for you and what your preferences are. Be aware of what you typically wear in the course of a week, in the course of a month. A big category that I struggled with was comfy sweaters. You don't have to get rid of all your comfy sweaters. Remember, this is your spring and summer capsule. So you just don't need as many for this spring and summer. You can tuck those away into the winter. I kept two out for my spring summer capsule. Next is work sweaters. Now you would think, what, is, like, what do you need work sweaters for in the middle of summer? Ooh, like, it's COVID here right now, so I'm just going to put a disclaimer. I'm working in the basement. It's cooler down there. And when you're not like moving around a lot, you need a sweater. So I'm going to keep out two work sweaters for that purpose. Dress pants. That's easy. I kept two pairs. I'm not going to be just wearing dress pants. I also have two skirts that I didn't film here and leggings. So two pairs of dress pants are plenty. I kept one pair of comfy jogger pants and workout wear. I actually kept a few pieces and I'll tell you why. In the summer times, we like to prioritize walks almost every evening and or at least every evening that we can. And so I go through a lot of workout wear in the course of a week. I decided to keep one full length pair of workout pants. I decided to keep two pairs of capri pants, one pair of workout shorts and a couple of workout tanks. Now the shorts are different. The athletic shorts are different than the other shorts that I kept in my summer wardrobe for the every days. And so the day to day shorts that I kept was two leggings. I'm going to keep out one full length pair of leggings for the days that are kind of like rainy or cloudy or dreary, and I can still wear them with like a tunic. I kept one pair of Capri leggings as well to just kind of mix and match with some of my outfits. 
Ooh, onto the jeans. I have one pair. Um, I don't suspect that I'm going to wear jeans a lot. I haven't been wearing them a lot in the fall and winter category. So I'm thinking that summer is not gonna be any different. I kept one pair of jeans. I'm gonna keep two rompers. Last summer, I was all about the rompers. I hope it's kind of that way this year. It was really easy. It's an all-in-one outfit. You just <laughs> pull it on and go. It was fun. So I think I'm gonna keep two rompers in my summer capsule this year. I think two summer dresses are plenty. I don't reach for the dresses. I don't typically wear them in the type of job that I work. So two should be good. Cardigans, I kept two summer cardigans. One is thicker than the other, um, but they are nice to just have when the night gets just a little bit cooler and you just wanna put something on your shoulders or you're sitting for um, you know, drinks on the deck and you want just a little bit of something covering your arms, but not a full on sweater. So I'm gonna keep two cardigans, two light cardigans. And then my trusty jean shirt. This jean shirt I wear all of the time. I adore it. I love it. It's so comfortable. So I'm keeping it forever and for every capsule, the end. Pajamas are a different thing. I'm not really gonna film that, but I just wanted to let you know I parred down my pajamas in the winter, like around January, and it worked really well. So I'm gonna keep one set of like matching pajamas with pants and everything. I'm going to keep one pair of uh, jammy shorts, one t-shirt that I wear as pajamas, and then also a nightgown. So after that, I just created some outfits with it. It was kind of fun. Step 12 was actually a totally new concept and new addition to my closet that I have never done before. I had taken pictures of the outfits that I had made, and then I created a little cheat list of those outfits. So I put all of the little pictures onto one page, printed it off, taped it into my closet, and it was an easy, quick snapshot of what my clothing capsule looked like. And it was so fun because on the days that I'm tired or the days that I just have no creative energy at all, or like I said, I do the weekly prep on the weekends. So I'm able to just look at the, the clothing list and plug in for the days, all the different outfits. It is making things so simple in my life. And trust me, I am just like all of you. I get into those same ruts where I'm just picking the same five or six outfits all of the time. It's nice to be able to have a sheet in your closet, a cheat sheet in your closet that really allows you to see, okay, I do have quite a bit of outfits that go together that I can pull and plug in that make me look like better put together, just better put together than what I would normally do, just grabbing it and throwing it on. And there you go. It's like from rags to riches, baby. I bought nothing at all. And it's gone from abundance to easy, easy, easy living. I feel like I have a way better, better put together wardrobe that I can pick from and choose from that I'm excited about again and that I love with no money, zero. And on that note, if I am interested in buying an additional piece, I don't have to feel guilty. I know what I could use it for. I know if I have too many already, I know what the shape of t-shirt that I kept looks like. I know the cut of it, I mean, and I can pick out things that match that so that I know it's gonna fit and I know it's gonna look good on me ongoing. So perfect. Wasn't that fun, I told you. I hope you can try it out. And I hope that there are some little tips and tricks along the way that I gave you that is gonna help you in that process because I love the changes that you are considering to make your life and your day-to-day -day that much easier. And if no one has told you yet today, I am so proud of you. If you have been looking for a village, you have most definitely found one. And if this video helped you today, leave some comments down below. 
Like and subscribe. It helps me keep coming back every Thursday with great content for you. I want to say thank you for popping by and learning to invest in yourself and your day-to-day -day life. Welcome Thrivers to my Thrival Guide. We'll see you soon.